not matter what anybody thinks. Sonny's in charge. I'm backing him all the way. That's what you tell the men. If anybody has a problem, set up a meeting. I will deal with them personally. Okay, thank you. What the hell do you want? Is there any way to talk to your new partner? Yeah, Sonny's running the business again. But that doesn't mean I have to agree with every decision that he makes. I think bringing you on is a huge mistake. Well, as you said, Sonny's the one who's running things, so it's really not your okay, call. Okay, then today. I'll ask again. What do you want, Rick? Look, you and I don't like each other, and that's never going to change. But things have fallen out in a way that we're forced to work together. I think the best thing that we can do is put our personal differences aside and band together for the common good. Now, Jason, I'm willing to do that. Are you saying that? No, I'm not? Not, I will never band together with you. Oh. It's going to be very disappointing for Sonny to hear. Well, then he can talk to me himself. My position's not going to change. Uh, look, I realize that the, the personal dynamics here are a little subtle for you to understand, so let me try to explain it. You and Sonny had just recently come together and had a meeting of the minds after a very, very difficult year. So your, your bond is very new and very tenuous. Sonny's going to be watching you. He's going to look to see if you're going to undermine his decisions. So your attitude towards me be it negative, could come back to haunt you. And why, why, why are you standing there so smug, telling me how things are going to be? Because you're Rick. So you must have some kind of leverage. Now, I don't know what, I don't know who against, but I'm going to find the leverage. And when I do, I'm going to get rid of you once and for all. that I have, Jason, the only leverage I need is the confidence and the backing of my brother. Now, I understand that you don't like that, but hey, there it is anyway. And if Sonny is going to pull off this rather difficult merger between two disparate organizations, he's going to need the both of us. It would be counterproductive, if not dangerous, for you to subvert me. Well, I can't tell Sonny who to hire, Rick, but I, I do have his ear. And I will make sure that he never makes the mistake of trusting you again. Okay, you're a little slow, so let me spell it out for you. The order of the universe has now changed. You are no longer in charge of anything. You are nothing but a thug with a gun, what you were born to be. The difference, Sonny's got a glimpse of your ambition. He's seen that you've taken power and you thrive in it. So, Jason, while you're in Sonny's ear, I guarantee you, I'm going to be in the other one. think that I'm crazy. He wouldn't be far from the truth. I doubt that. No, it's true. It's official. I have postpartum depression. Remember how I used to make all those lofty moral judgments about Carly? How could anyone leave their child? Well, I found out. <laughs> At least Carly bailed and didn't try to fake it. Now I've just ruined my entire life. Jason. Oh, There's something that I didn't tell Patrick. One day I was called into Mercy and I was with Emma at Kelly's. And I just took off and went to the hospital. I forgot my daughter. She was sitting there for hours. I mean, what if something had happened to her? What if someone had taken her? But I didn't care about that. My ego was more important than my own child. I, I, I have no right to have a child. Patrick wanted to take me out for a romantic dinner to give us some, some time together. He was trying really hard. And um, so I went home, I got dressed. I was really excited about spending a night out with my husband. 
And then I came to the intersection of I-94 and I turned right instead of left and just kept going. I mean, I didn't plan it. I stopped in the first bar that I saw in Rochester. I started talking to this bartender. And then all of a sudden, I could not believe what was coming out of my mouth. I told her that my name was Nancy Green, that I was a pharmaceutical sales rep from San Francisco. I wasn't married, I didn't have any kids. I mean, I created this entirely new identity for myself on the spot. I mean, who does that? Uh, a woman with postpartum depression. I guess. I know. I know that you're scared. But Carly, she got better. That was Carly. And what if I should... Maybe I should just admit I'm a terrible mother and I should get out of Emma's life before I cause emotional damage that I can't undo. Is that what you want? And do you really want to give up on your daughter? get better. I have to get better. I I owe that to Emma and Patrick.